You are listening to the Week of Prayer readings for Sunday, written and narrated by Glenn Townend, the President of the South Pacific Region of the Seventh-day Adventist Church based in Sydney, Australia. What is a disciple? The Gospel of Mark records this well-known yet unique story. They came to Bethsaida, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. When he had spit in the man's eyes and put his hands on them, Jesus asked, Do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were opened. His sight was restored and he saw everything clearly. That was Mark 8, 22 to 25 in the New International Version. In every other healing account, Jesus heals by one touch or one command. Why were there two interactions needed before this man was healed? Consider the sequencing of the stories in Mark 8. Prior to this narrative, Jesus has miraculously fed the 4,000. However, the Pharisees still wanted a sign. In response, Jesus warned his disciples regarding the yeast of the Pharisees, symbolically referring to their lack of faith. Then, after restoring the blind man's sight, Jesus asked the disciples the ultimate question of faith. Who do you say that I am? Thus, the context of this story is faith. Note that it was others who brought the blind man to Jesus. It was these people, not the blind man, who had faith in Jesus. As a 10-year-old boy, I was blind for a short time after watching welding, despite being told not to do so. I woke the next morning and couldn't see. It was frightening. I had to depend on my family to feed, wash, dress and lead me. I had to trust them to be my eyes. Similarly, as Jesus took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village, the blind man began to trust Jesus to be his eyes. As Jesus put spit on the man's eyes and asked, Do you see anything? The man replied, I see people. They look like trees walking around. His faith in Jesus increases. Finally, as Jesus placed his hands on the man's eyes and he sees clearly, his faith in Jesus as a person, healer and life changer was complete. Through this process of developing trust, Jesus took a man with little or no faith and led him to a place of trust and faith, thereby restoring the man's life. This is how Jesus works with each one of us. He knows where we are in our personal faith journey. Even if we only have a little faith but are willing, Jesus can lead us and give us the right evidence to develop trust and faith in him for the restoration of our life. This is what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. The word translated disciple in the New Testament is matheteus, which is derived from a Greek verb to learn. Thus, a disciple of Jesus is a person who is learning to develop trust and faith in him and to be restored by him. This was the process Jesus' twelve special disciples followed. Jesus chose them to be with him and then to send them out, in Mark chapter 3, verses 13 to 15. As they spent time with Jesus, they learned to trust him. They saw how he related to others with dignity, compassion and truth. Children, foreigners, lepers, scribes, women, those seeking help and those intent on harm. From their time with Jesus, they were then sent out to do what Jesus did and intervene, healing relationships, disease, disability and death. 
They were to teach forgiveness, self-sacrifice and internal heart change rather than external rule following. They, like Jesus, were to minister and lead with a heart for service rather than ego, focusing on the inherent value and potential of each person. Ultimately, because of Jesus' coaching and mentoring, All but one of these disciples became leaders of a multiplying disciple-making movement. The process of discipleship is much the same for us today. As we intentionally spend time with Jesus through intentional habits of reading and reflecting on Scripture, talking to and listening to God, spending time in nature, resting on the Sabbath, cultivating gratitude, we're learning habits of thinking, believing and doing that develops trust and faith in Jesus. As our relationship with Jesus grows, we internalise that God is love. We learn to love God, others and ourselves, as Mark 12, 30-33 says. As Ellen White writes, It is your privilege ever to grow in grace advancing in the knowledge and love of God. If you maintain that sweet communion with Christ, it is your privilege to enjoy. As with the original twelve, our time with Jesus results in being changed into his likeness. But while this work of God's grace may not be complete, we too are being sent out to reflect the character of Jesus with empathy, truth and courage. We live for Jesus in the home, school, workplace and community to bring about change there. This story from Papua New Guinea illustrates the process. Two elders in the Medang town church observed that a group of high school educated unemployed young men was growing, as was crime in the area. They decided to provide these Medang street boys with food once a week. The church rallied with not only food but care. After a short time, they asked the boys if they would like to join a Bible reading group. They provided the Gospel of Mark and Luke and the Book of Acts for the boys to read, along with some basic self-discovery questions. Over time, these interactions led to greater compassion and vision in the church people less crime in the town, and some of the street boys becoming disciples of Jesus. The South Pacific Division has a mantra. A disciple is a person who in every way is becoming more like Jesus. It's based on Ephesians 4.15. We recognise that disciples of Jesus are all works in progress because becoming like him is a goal that cannot be completed in this life, but that will be continued in the life to come. Some have ongoing challenges with patience, tithing, language, healthful eating, attitude. However, we're not to judge each other. Rather, we are to love and encourage and build each other up. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 to become disciple-making disciples of Jesus. Questions for reflection. 1. Describe an experience in your life in which Jesus helped you develop greater trust and faith in him. 2. Which devotional habits have particularly helped you Be with Jesus. And which devotional habits do you find more challenging and why? 3. What do you like about following Jesus? How would others know that you follow Jesus? And 4. How have you experienced being sent out into your home, school, workplace and community to bless others.